So welcome back to another installment of my collaboration with Intercraft. I'm going to carry on making our memory box and making another wallet to go inside. So I'm carrying on with my Amazonia paper from Stamperia. So in the original Mechanical SeaWorld one, I had this uh, V-shaped wallet. So with this one, it's a bit different to the other wallet, which just held larger items. This one has been designed for six by four photos because what you've got is a divide down the middle. So when you put your six by four photo in there, it's not going to fall over. It's going to stay upright. I same that size, so they're not going to cross and things because of that barrier. It's going to show you how to make this. So again, this is going to make the most out of a nice big designer piece. So this has got this large image of the toucan. So that's why I've gone for this one. And I'll show you later how I'm going to make the most out of the paper to get that toucan onto our wallet, but also have some extra strips which we can use elsewhere. So to make this, again, I've got my 220 black GSM cardstock and my trimmer. So I've got two sheets. The first one is to cut the base. And again, it's gonna be the same as the other wallets to make the most of that size again um, for those six by four photos. So it's gonna be nine inches. We have the long bit. By six and a half. So that will be the base of my wallet. Then I'm going to make the pocket. So with the pocket, I need it to be five and a half by ten. Okay. So it's just those two pieces. I'm just going to bring in my scoreboard. Now that nine inch one, I don't need to do anything with. But with this one, I'm going to do my standard pocket thing of half an inch down two sides. So for this one, it's the short sides and half an inch down the long one. But I'm not finished with my scoreboard yet for this one. So I'm going to put it back in here with a long bit on the top and I'm going to go to my halfway mark which is five inches and I'm just going to do a bit of a deep score there and then just lightly go down the rest. So I've marked where my five inch one is just to make it easier to see and then just a light press down. That's just going to help me line up my uh, divider. Oh, we're talking of the divider. I didn't cut the pieces, did I? So from the scrap pieces that came out, I'm just going to cut it at one inch. And I, want to, I don't want them too long, so I'm just going to cut them at two inches. So I've got two pieces which are one inch wide and two inches tall and I'm just going to score them down the centre so just at the half inch mark again so they can be my dividers later on okay so let me put the dividers and the back off to the side and let's just focus on this pocket so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring my ruler in and I'm going to mark from that score line, I'm going to mark two inches down. So there it is. So I'm on that score line. So I started off deep, then I've got the sort of faint line there, so I know it's 
on my center line. And what I'm gonna do is, can you see I've done a little cross on there? I'm gonna go from that score line out to meet that half inch one from there. So this is what's going to make my V. So I'm not going to the corner, I'm going to that score line. Okay. So now I'm just going to grab my score tape and I'm going to put the tape in side that half inch. Let's not waste that bit. There we have it. And along the bottom. And just like I do with any other pocket, where those cross I'm going to come in at 45 degrees towards that cross and rather than going straight I'm just going to tilt my scissors slightly just to make a bit of a sharp angle so when they come together they won't cross and on the top just mitre it off a little bit there. So this time I can do it on this side. So again towards the cross, angle slightly and cut away. Let's grab my larger scissors. We're now just going to cut that V-shape. Okay. And our pocket is cut, so let's just score them backwards now. And when you've got a long one, just start in the middle and work out each way. And I want to try and get this as flat as I can. Okay. So that's my pocket, so I'm going to turn it face down and now I'm just going to put these dividers. Now remember now this is optional, you don't have to do this. But if you want to have your 6x4 photos to stay in place, this is a good way to do it. So that's all I've done is added tape to both of the outsides of my V shape. And I'm just going to Mitre. So this is my spine bit. I'm going to cut that way. You can do both sides if you want, but because it's going to be on the bottom, I don't have to. So here's the other one. So this time I'm going to put my spine so that they come, the two Vs come together. So I'm going to just trim off there. That's just going to help the paper not catch. So I've taken off one side and I'm not going up to the top, I'm actually coming down a little bit because I want space for my paper to tuck behind a little bit to get a nice finish. So that's why I haven't done them the height of the po uh, pocket. It's so that I can still get my matting layer underneath. And that's it then. So let's bring back our pocket. So I can't just take off a little bit here because it's going to be in the middle. But on the edge, I'm just going to take off and fold back a little corner. Now I do like to work upside down when I do things like this so that I can look at these corners. So I'm not doing it for the camera. This is actually how I do it. Now if you struggle with this, what you can do is bring in your scoreboard and if you put your back piece right up, 
what you can do is just line up your pouch and that can help you to line up your pouches if you want. And then remember now that middle is already attached so I've got to be a little bit more careful. Wait, I've got two bits here, haven't I? Here we go. So there we have our V-shape envelope with two pouches for your six by four photos. So let's bring in the paper. So I got this lovely tube gun here. So with the tube gun, I want to use more of him on the pouch than anything. So let's have a look. So if I cut him there, I'm just going to get the head. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off a bit of the top. So I think, let's have a look. If I cut him up. Yeah, so I've got three and a half inches. So that's actually a really good size to use somewhere else. So I've cut three and a half inches off the top. So now I'm going to start measuring. So my wallet is six and a half tall. So that means I want this at six and a quarter. And again, I've got that nice pattern strip to use somewhere else. Or those really nice colours on the back. The back of this page have some really nice bold colours. I hate it when you like both sides. And then my wallet was nine inches long. So I'm going to go to eight and three quarters. And again, I've got a nice piece there to use on another envelope. Right, okay, so I've got my toucan ready. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on him so you can see my measurements a bit better. So here's my wallet. Now my wallet's got a bit of an overlap here before my pouch starts. So that distance from the top to the start of the pouch is one and a half inches. So with my toucan piece, what I'm gonna do is mark one and a half inches down each side. There's one and two. Okay, so I've come down one and a half each way. Now I'm using my envelope to mark my center just in case I was off a little bit when I measured it. So I've got a bit of black this side and this side, and I'm just going to mark where my V began. Okay, so it's there. And the distance from the top of my envelope to the bottom of my V is three and a half inches. So I'm going to duplicate that on my token piece as well. So three and a half inches would be there. There we are. And I'm just going to now join up those pencil lines. So there it is there. And there. So now those lines will mimic the ones on our envelope. So we should get a nice fitting matte and layer. Okay, be careful because I've only got the one sheet. So let's bring it in. And there we have our token 
still in one uh, piece, so we're making the most out of our images, and a nice matte and layer. So I'm just going to bring my black distress ink. And I'm not going to bother with that V because that's going to be tucked behind there anyway. And what this is also do is if I've left some pencil marks, it's going to hide it. So I don't need to bother rubbing them out on my decorative paper. But I am going to rub them out on that V. Bring in my glue. Carefully tuck it in. And then the V-shaped one. You can see what I was saying about the back of this one. It's like, why couldn't this have been on the back of one of the ones I was and has keen on? Here we go, a nice large envelope, making the most out of our designer paper of the image, so I keep laying it all showing. And also, as I said, you can put your six by four photos, let's grab this scrap bit, in there, and they're not gonna fall over. So hope you enjoyed that one. We're gonna add that now to our memory box. There we go. And if you enjoyed that, please have a look at the other videos in the series. Head over to Intercraft to have a look at what they've got in stock with these gorgeous Stamperia papers. As I said, I use the Amazonia here. And if you do make this wallet or any of the other ones, or indeed the whole box, please head over to my Facebook group, Paper Crafting with Paul. I'll add a link as well in the description and you'll find the cutting list down there as well and all the help. So make sure you uh, click subscribe, hit those thumbs up and help me build my channel as well. And I'll be back, there are more envelopes to come. So see you again soon.